Good afternoon and welcome to our Oak Bend Medical Center Happy Hour podcast. My name is Donna and I am your host. I am very excited to introduce our guest today as we speak about balance. Lisa Wilson is the Director of Rehabilitation at Oak Bend Medical Center. She holds a bachelor's degree in physical therapy from Texas Tech University. Lisa has 29 years of experience working in both inpatient and outpatient settings. Lisa considers herself a generalist and has experience in treatment of a very wide variety of patient diagnoses. She has treated balance disorders her whole career, but more intensely the past 12 years and passionate about making a difference in the life of every patient she treats. Welcome, Lisa. We're glad to have you today. Nice to be here, Donna. Good to see you. So we always, I think of physical therapy and I think, ah, my knee hurts or my hip hurts, but I'm getting older a little bit. And I I do notice I wobble a little bit more and I'm assuming that might be a balance problem, but how would I know that? Well, I mean, balance uh, there's so many things that your body is doing at one time to maintain balance. So um, obviously your hip problem, your knee problem could be attributing to your balance problems. Um, you know, to maintain your balance, it takes multiple systems. It's a complex, it's a complex process. So if one of these systems is not working strong enough, uh, it's a little bit weak, um, or maybe a combination of these symptoms or uh, these systems are not working, then your balance is definitely going to be affected. I mean, the, the, the systems, let me just mention them, are the musculoskeletal system. So your muscles, they have to be strong to provide the power you need, um, to provide the stability you need to be able to do what you need to do. Your joints have to be flexible. They have to be able to allow normal postures and normal movement. Your sensory systems, you have your, uh, your vision. Your vision plays a huge part in your balance. Most people don't even realize that. Uh, you know, sometimes walking at, um, at, you get up out of the bed to go to the restroom at night and uh, the light's off and you have to adjust the way you walk because you can't really see well. Um, your hearing, or more importantly, your vestibular system, your inner ear, page plays again, a large part in your balance your sensation, your ability to be able to feel things, your feet touching the ground. Um, If your feet are numb, that affects your balance. You got to think about all these things, your proprioception, your ability for your ankles and other joints to be able to tell your brain um, what position they're in, that affects your balance. And then finally, it's your, your, what we call your central integrative processor, which is your brain and your spinal cord. They take the combination of all these things so that the rest of your body is telling you and they process it and then they send back signals to your body to help you to to balance to make the adjustments that you need so um you know do you have a balance problem if you think that you do you do there are but i can't tell you right now is it what it is i'd have to evaluate you and you know to make that determination of how we can fix your balance but you have, you, you have the first uh, idea of, do I have a balance problem? Yes, you do. So is it particular to any age or does it just, it can happen um, to anyone? It can, it can happen to anyone, absolutely. Um, but they, you know, they kind of show up two different ways. Number one, it can be gradual over a period of time. So that kind of comes with age or that just comes with debility. So uh, you end up in the hospital and you have pneumonia and one thing leads to another, you become less active and things compound and your balance is affected. Okay, so those are slow changes. You have slow changes in your sensation, your vision, your brain, your flexibility. And then another um, way things happen, it's, it's an acute onset. Something happens immediately. You have a stroke um, or you become dehydrated and you have an electrolyte imbalance. Maybe you change blood pressure medicines and now your blood pressure drops too low. Those things can affect your balance. So it can happen two different ways. And it's and it's not definitely, definitely not always age dependent. 
So, so Lisa, how would I seek care? How would I, for me or my loved one, if we notice there's something that's not right, how do I talk to it about my, to my doctor and really get him to understand? Okay. Okay. So, um, I mean, first you got to kind of know, you know, for you to know, am I having a balance problem? Okay. So you got to be able to know what to tell your doctor. All right. So if you notice like, Hey, um, I, I'm starting to walk different. If you start walking different, maybe your, your, your steps are wider. You're walking slower. You're walking more guarded. You're not able to multitask. You, you can't step down the step and, and carry the groceries at the same time. Um, maybe you've, fallen or almost fallen okay these are things that you can tell your doctor um maybe you've noticed weakness you, you used to be able to get up off the couch now it's difficult for you to get up you have to really push with your arms that's weakness that could affect your balance you got to tell the doctor these things make notes of it maybe you're less physically active you're not able to um go and walk around walmart two times like you used to be able to um or you have to sit down and rest more frequently those are things you got to tell your doctor. Um, you, you know, again, make notes and uh, don't be afraid to let the doctor know. Simple things like um, a gouty arthritis, your big toe hurts. Well, of course, that's going to make you limp. You're going to limp. You're going to lose your balance possibly. All right. You got to let your doctor know these things. Um, and um, do you notice that maybe you're scared more often? I don't want to get on that escalator because I'm not quite sure. I don't like escalators. Well, I don't like, why don't you like escalators, you know? Um, well, because I'm afraid I'm gonna lose my balance. You, you gotta be, uh, don't be afraid to let your doctor know that you are having some issues. You go in, let them know. Um, they can evaluate you. They can send you to a physical therapist. And we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, but um, there's very extensive, um, evaluations that we can do to figure out really what your problem is and be able to treat you and, and turn things around. So it can be turned around. It can be turned around. I would, uh, these, this is not statistically speaking, but from what I've seen, um, 80% of the time it can be turned around and, um, 80 to 90%. And, uh, I've, um, been kind of doing some of my own statistics and keeping some numbers and we can make at least a 60% improvement in almost uh, everyone's balance who comes to see us. Absolutely. No, depending on age, doesn't matter. 90 years old, 85 years old, 45 years old. It doesn't matter. That's certainly better than waiting till I break my hip. That's, that's the thing, Donna. That's the thing. You, you got to get in early. And um, a lot of people are afraid they're, or they're ashamed or they're embarrassed or they're just or they just think, well, this is just part of getting old. I'm just going to have to live with it. But what happens, it compounds. OK, so you 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 have one problem and then you stop doing the things that you love to do. You used to go to the football game, but now you don't go to the football game. You're just going to watch it on TV because you don't think you can walk that far. And if you, so you're going to sit on your couch and watch the, the game. And so you, you don't get out and you lose the endurance that you used to have. And then you're going to gain weight possibly. And that's going to Im impair your balance as well. You get more stiff, that impairs your balance as well. And um, then, you know, you lose your ability to go out, socialize. And then it's, I can't get to around the grocery store anymore. So it all, it all compounds. And then comes a fall. And then, you know, and then you think, ah, oh, well, I'm out of shape. I haven't done anything, you know, and it's all those type of things. And then COVID has really, really played, um, you know, uh, it's, it's been bad for people in that um, the people that got out and just did basic things, basically went to the grocery store, went to church and went to their family. They didn't do that. And they stayed home, gained weight. And, you know, the elderly, we're seeing a lot of people come in with um, just really being out of shape and unbalanced, no functional endurance, can't walk, mm, can't hardly walk from their car into the clinic where they used to be able to do these types of things. So whenever your body's decline that much, your balance is going to be significantly impaired and your risk for fall goes up.
Can you kind of give us a little bit of a hint on what physical therapy can do to help with balance? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the first thing we do is we, we perform a, a really a comprehensive evaluation of, of all the systems that come into play for balance. Okay. So um, we will, you know, we'll check your vision. We will check your flexibility, your strength. We're going to look at your sensation, um, your, what we call proprioception, your ability to be able to um, uh, know what position your body is in space. We will um, just do a very comprehensive assessment of balance and endurance, um, everything. It'll give us some numbers. It'll give us some idea of your percent impairment. Okay, so it's not just me saying, oh, you're unbalanced or oh, you're weak. I can give you specific numbers to say, this is how unbalanced you are when you are just standing still, or this is how unbalanced you are when you're trying to function in the community and compared to normal, this is your risk for falling. And, and then we'll look to see, well, uh, oh, and I always look at feet. I always look at shoe wear. Sometimes a simple change of shoes can s significantly improve your balance. Um, people who have had multiple foot surgeries, you know, and their feet are just really tight, unflexible, or weak. Um, we can um, address all of those little, the, all those specific things that we find um, and, and help you then to be able to um, do things at home, to work on your own, come in to see us. Uh, we challenge you. We challenge your balance. We guide you through the whole process of what you need to do to address all the little things that are going to make your balance better. You know, Donna, sometimes we will have to refer people to, out to another uh, specialist. I have had people come in here with poor balance and I've had ended up referring them out to orthopedic, uh, regular orthopedic doctors. I referred them out to orthopedic surgeons. Um, I referred them out to ENT, the ear, nose and throat doctors, neurologist. I referred to neuro ophthalmologist. Um, when I, if I've determined that the, um, the balance dysfunction may really, really have something to do with a severe problem with the inner ear or with the eye movement. Um, I've had a physician, I mean, a patient come in one time from a pulmonologist because he couldn't, he, his endurance was just poor. But when he stood up in the waiting room, his balance was so poor, I was, I was alarmed. And so I, uh, after thoroughly evaluating him, I sent him to a neurologist who sent him to a neurosurgeon and he was in, um, he was having neck surgery within probably um, five days because he was that severely impaired. And he wasn't coming to me for balance. He was coming to me for his endurance. So we're able to pick up these types of things. And um, we work together with the medical community and the different physicians to be able to um, you know, address all of your needs. And with a final goal of making your life better, making um, your, your endurance and your balance better and giving you a better quality of life, getting you back to being able to do the things you want to do with more confidence and less fear of falling. That is amazing that the things physical therapy can do to help with so many other conditions that you wouldn't even think of. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything a person could do to prevent the balance from getting bad? Easiest thing, and it, you know, it's easy to say and hard to do, okay? Stay physically active as possible. Walking, get, get out, get into a walking program. You got to stay mobile. You got to stay strong. So walking, stretching, um, strength training, um, or group exercises. If you're more of a group person, you know, you can do Tai Chi, aerobics, um, yoga, all these different types of things. Try to stay physically active. And it's also recommended that if that you do a variety of activities. So if you do strength training, well then also get into a walking program, or if you do yoga, well then also get into, you know, a, a strength training program. Try to um, combine the things because then it's going to hit you and improve things uh, kind of more wholly. Okay. You're not just working on one thing. Um, and then also, you know, to prevent, you know, balance problems from getting bad, address them sooner than later. Okay. You want to get in there, 
um, and, and, and uh, again, don't, don't be afraid, don't be embarrassed, get it addressed because it's easier to address it early on than after the problems compound, you know, and, and just be open and, uh, uh, open and uh, with your physician, okay? And, and, and be open with your family members, you know, whether you're talking to someone that, that you're noticing uh, something with them, you know, your, your mother, your father, your uncle, whatever, your brother, your sister, you know, hey, I've noticed these changes in you. Tell me what's going on, you know. Uh, I'm in the medical field or whatever. I, I can, you know, help to guide you. Or, you know, if you're doing it for yourself, don't be embarrassed. Just try to get a little bit of help. It doesn't mean you're getting old. It means something's changed and we just need to get it addressed. So some of our followers out there today listening to this, may have been at home during COVID or more sedentary and noticed that they're not moving around as more. Or, or, she's right, I have a balance problem or something. Can you self-refer to physical therapy or does it need to go through your physician? Right, it's, it's really best to go through your physician first. In Texas, you can self-refer and the physical therapist can evaluate you what we will do is we will bring you in. You can come in. We will evaluate you. And then we will send our evaluation to your physician and have that physician sign off on our evaluation. Um, and that turns into a prescription. Okay. And uh, so we'd be in contact with your physician to let them know what we found and why we're wanting to continue uh, with the treatment um, for, you know, whatever condition with a balance or whatever else we find. Um, so yes, you can self-refer uh, probably more often than not, uh, people will go to directly to the um, physician and then to the physical therapist. So for our listeners, you can always suggest to your physician, um, can I get an order for physical therapy? Most physicians won't um, say no if you have an issue. You also have the right to choose the physical therapy institute that you want to go to. So, yes, yes, Donna. Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention that too. Just like any other specialty, um, if you're going to go see an orthopedic doctor and you have a hand problem, you probably want to see a physician who specializes in hands. Or uh, same thing with an uh, if I want to go. Uh, if I have a problem with my brain, I want to see a neurologist. And if I have specifically cancer of the brain, I want to see a specific doctor that treats that. Okay. If you want to um, see a physical therapist that treats balance disorders, I would specifically look for a physical therapist that treats balance disorders. Um, because again, balance is not all that simple. And it's not just, can I stand on one leg and walk a straight line heel to toe? Um, it, it, it's very multifactorial and it takes somebody with experience or at least the, you know, recent knowledge um, and education to be able to, and experience to be able to do that effectively. So during all this COVID and everything else, I would say probably 40% of America has been sedentary. Absolutely. Absolutely. And some oh, have been, boy. yeah. And some have been sedentary way before that, especially if you have an office job or anything like that. And we all heard your inspiration of start a walking program, stretching and all this stuff. But how do you truly get started? And is that something you could get a physical therapy referral for to help you start a strengthening program? Yes, absolutely. You can. You can. You can. You can, again, go into the physical therapist directly, or you can talk to your physician and just let them know that you are interested in getting started in an exercise program. The physician will have to put, or put down a diagnosis, but um, almost always are, the diagnosis is generalized deconditioning. Um, you tell them you're having some balance problems or whatever. Uh, sometimes there's dizziness, just weakness. There's very specific diagnosis that the physician will put down um, and for us to be able to treat. Um, and then um, you can come in and uh, truly most of, a lot of our patients are general conditioning. Okay, so they come in 
they're just, they're very out of shape, but they don't know how to start. They don't know what to do and, or they don't feel safe doing it. Okay. And so we give them the guidance to be able to gradually progress. All right. Or they're so scared. It's, it's again, they can't even hardly walk into the clinic. They're wondering, how am I going to exercise for an hour? We're able to, to educate them and, um, and, and walk them through that, that uh, process and give them a lot of confidence. We have really, really good results. And that's very prudent for people to do that because if you don't really know how to exercise or stretch or how far your limitations are, you can really hurt yourself. So I could see going in and having a therapist kind of work with you and jumpstart you. Um, it seems like a safe way to prevent further damage or other injuries. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And what is, you know, the exercise for you is may not be the same thing as the exercise for Susie or for Mandy or for Johnny because Johnny's problem is with his feet and and Jack has a bad knee and a bad hip okay and Karen she has no core stability okay so all of the everybody has different problems so if you just say oh my balance is off give me some balance exercises that's really hard for me to just hand you a piece of paper that says I mean I can do it um, but it's, it, I'm not really doing you any justice without evaluating you and being able to really find out what the underlying cause of your balance problems are. So I understand there's very, something very special about your physical therapy that you also have a gym on site. Yes, ma'am. We, we do. It's called lifestyles, lifestyles, fitness of Oak Bend. And, um, you know, it's kind of a unique, um, facility. It's combined there in our um, therapy clinic. We have a pretty good size physical therapy clinic. So, um, you know, a lot of our patients, um, and this is the lifestyles is open to the community, but um, it is kind of, um, it is, it is a kind of a safe place. Okay. Safe is the word these days. It's a safe place for, for um, people to come and work out. We do have an older population there. Um, we do have some younger people that, that do come and work out at Lifestyles, but um, a lot of the patients that we see, and these are it's, uh, the balanced people, they, the ones that we that come in for core endurance and they're out of shape, many of them, we will then have them join the fitness center. And once they join Lifestyles, we will provide them with a custom program. They come in, they continue their two to three day week workout. Um, they're there. Um, amongst the, the other therapy uh, staff, they're amongst the, um, the other therapy patients. Uh, we have a really neat um, kind of a family, you know, feeling here. And, um, you know, the, the fitness members, the physical therapy patients, they really enjoy coming back. You know, they, we know uh, them, they know us. The fitness members, if they have a question, about, you know, well, what about this exercise? Or I want to work on that now, or my shoulder hurts now, or I need to adjust that, or now I have this going on. We're right there to answer those questions and guide them in their fitness, you know, program. So uh, yes, ma'am, it's, it's a really, really good program. And your team also delivers all the physical therapy in our hospital. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We have, um, we, I have uh, staff in both the Williams Way and the Jackson Street location. And um, so they treat all the acute care patients uh, and skilled nursing patients. Uh, many of those patients will then transition to outpatient physical therapy. And then many of those will transition into the fitness center and continue to work out with us there. And then maybe something happens, they end up back in the hospital and, um, you know, then they'll come back and see us this again and we get them right back into fitness and and um and working out again and so yes ma'am we have a really good team here at Oak Bend when it comes to the rehabilitation department and I will personally testify for that because I've had my own parents in um, the skilled unit who then went to outpatient and I think they continue to use it because of the friendships they've made with the staff it is a very unusual, very friendly staff that really treats you like you're one of the family. So 
I think that's extremely important when you're not feeling well and you can't mobilize and they are so supportive of it. So I personally can tell you it is a wonderful program. You also have several locations that's convenient to pretty much anywhere. Oh, yes. we have, The Oakland has locations uh, pretty much all over Houston, and you can visit the uh, OBN, uh, openmedicalcenter.org to find all of the locations. Uh, most of the lo locations that um, I am over um, and that I staff are in the Fort Bend area. So we have a, a location in actually in Wharton, and then we have a location in Richmond at the Jackson Street location. We have a physical therapy outpatient department also in the new territory location on 99 and 90. And then we have one at the Williams Way location um, off of Williams Way and Highway 59. So those are the clinics that I'm specifically um, associated with. But absolutely, if you're in a different part of Houston, um, look up o uh, Open Medical Center and look into one of our physical therapy clinics. There are, again, some that, that specialize in balance disorders. There are some that specialize in orthopedic disorders. Right. And, and Lisa, I think your group kind of specializes in all things. In all things. Much. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So if, you, if, if a, a prescription is sent to our clinic, then our main office will take a look at that to look at the diagnosis. Um, that we will be treating to make sure that patient is uh, aligned with the sp uh, specific clinic and the specific therapist that they need to be seeing. Um, and uh, then they'll contact that patient. Uh, they will find the location that's closest to them um, with the therapist that is as specific to treating their um, diagnosis as possible so that we can give them the right treatment, you know, as close to their home or their job as possible. Lisa, is there anything else you want our listeners to know before we go? When it comes to balance, the main thing is, you know, everyone is going to eventually probably experience some type of balance disorder, some type of balance dysfunction. Things are kind of get weaker. They get tighter. Um, you know, people gain weight. They become less active. And uh, I just, the main thing is, you know, to try to get in and address these things soon. It's nothing to be ashamed of. So many people are afraid to let their doctor know that they tripped or they fell or they have, you know, this problem that they're seeing. They're afraid it's just, I'm just getting old. And I just want to let people know that, um, you know, you may be getting older, but but you don't have to just let that be you and 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 let it, you know, the, the, the snowball effect take effect. You can, you can stop it and um, return to being, you know, active, doing the things you want to do, less pain um, and with less fear. So I think that's extremely important, you know, again, at any age. And you know, we're really kind of talking more, if you're not talking about an acute onset, a stroke or something like that, if you're talking about, you know, the progressive decline, you're talking about really anybody from the age of probably 40 on you know, you're going to start seeing some changes. So I think that's important. So I would think it would be important when you go to have your physical or you go to meet with your physician, you know, if you're diabetic, any of those things, talk to your doctor about, would I need some physical therapy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I think, you know, it's, I think it's very important to, to, to have your yearly physical with your physician, all right? Again, that's, that's one of those things that's easier said than done. That's kind of like exercising. Oh, get out and exercise, sure. Yeah, go get your mammogram, sure. Go see your physician once a, once a year, but do. Even if there's nothing that's ailing you, go see your physician, have your heart checked. Um, talk to them about any little changes that you may be having. Maybe it's some dizzy, maybe it's some dizziness. Maybe it's some ringing in your ears. So a little bit of dizziness here or there could lead to problems later. That can lead to some balance dysfunction. Uh, some hearing loss can lead to balance dysfunction. Um, you know, get in there and, 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 have that, and have that conversation with your physician. And then if you do see a specialist, um, maybe you normally see an ENT for your ears or your hard of hearing, or you do see a neurologist for some neuropathy that you have. Don't miss those appointments. Go in and, and, and 
and see them. Even if things you don't think things have changed, let them take a look at you and then have open and honest conversations about maybe even some little things that you see that have changed. And the, the physician may not recommend physical therapy, but now you know that physical therapy is something that may be able to help you. And like Donna said, very often physicians are open. If you just say, hey, I'd like to go see the physical therapist. I want to get started in a program. I think I might have a problem with my balance or with, with some dizziness, or I may have a problem with you know, my walking is not the same or my endurance isn't where I want it to be. Can I get a, a physical therapy prescription? 99% of physicians will give you a physical therapy prescription. It's very, it's, it's, so, it's very common. You said a word and I'm going to put you on the spot real quick uh -huh. before we go. Uh, neuropathy. Can y'all help with neuropathy? Because I hear a lot of patients talk about neuropathy and you see them kind of shuffle in a little bit painful right, feet. right right well there's a lot of different things out there can you help with neuropathy neuropathy is going to be a nerve damage okay so there's multiple causes of neuropathy so number one you'd have to we'd have to have the physician determine what the underlying cause of the neuropathy is um and then um can it be reversed I don't believe that neuropathy can be reversed. Can it be slowed? Yes. Can it be improved? Yes. But there is a certain amount of nerve damage that once it's damaged, it's damaged. So very often what therapy will do will be able to strengthen other parts of your system to make up for what you've lost with the, the neuropathic system with the neuropathy. So, you know, if you can't feel very the ground very well, but your muscles are strong and your muscles are flexible and your vestibular system is strong. Well, when the, uh, when, when your sensation's not there and it's not sending all the signals, everything else is making up for it. And it's able to help the help your balance and help you to be able to function better. Um, I know there are, and I'm not going to go into it, but there are some different modalities and things that are, that people are are selling and, and trying and doing. And there's acupuncture. There's a variety of different things that people are are trying for neuropathy. And I I haven't, um, um, you know, I think the jury's out on most um, most of those types of things. Um, what I tell people is try it. It can't hurt. If somebody wants, you know, doctor says, hey, this is going to help your neuropathy. Try it. It, it can't hurt, uh, you know, it's not going to make it right. anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. But it could help with balance and stuff, help. learning how to deal with your neuropathy. Yeah, absolutely. We have people all the time with neuropathy then, um, and, and we are able to improve their balance. Um, and I would probably say uh, people that come in with impaired balance, I'm just throwing it out there, but 50% of them have some amount of neuropathy at least yes ma'am so to our viewers um take care of yourself ask your doctor questions be up front um we are also going to post the location of the physical therapy and a phone number if you have any questions they are so wonderful to direct you in the right places but do talk to your doctors make sure you take care of you and I want to thank you, Lisa, for joining us today. And a big thank you to all our listeners for tuning in. Beginning now, set an intention and a relentless focus on living your life as the greatest person you can be in all situations. Please join us next week. Thank you for joining us today on Oak Bend Medical Center Happy Hour Podcast. We hope you enjoyed today's broadcast and invite you to email us at oakbendhappyhourpodcast at obmc.org with any questions or topics that you would like for us to cover. Remember, you can find us here each Friday at 5. Until next week, be mindful and stay healthy.